Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. It was a great Saturday. I can't say that I got much accomplished today, but it was a good Saturday. Maybe next week I'll get a lot more accomplished. I haven't, I've been dealing with allergies this week. Just haven't been feeling all that great. I forgot to put my watch on. I forgot to put my rings on. Oh, well. It is what it is. Well, I hope you had a great Saturday. And um, I hope that you are reading God's Word every day. My name is Charm, and this is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. And I feel like God has called me to share His truths and the gospel of Jesus. So every time that I come on here, I try to do that. I try to read God's word because I do not know everything about God's word. I'm still learning too. So we're learning together and um, also share a gospel message, usually through some tracks or something. But those are the two things that I want to do. And tonight we're going to do Psalm 44. I think it's going to be a pretty long one. So it's probably all we were going to do. I was thinking about doing Luke 6, but I need to get in there and I need to um, get dinner for my child. I already ate. I eat earlier because I try to do intermittent fasting and I haven't been doing Uh, next week's a new week. I'm going to work on that again. And I'm going to work on eating less carbs too. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we just thank you for all the many things that you do for us, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. You are from everlasting to everlasting lasting and you will always be you are our everlasting father you love us god you treasure us god thank you for being our creator our sustainer our protector our provider thank you for being our shelter in the storm thank you for being our strength and our refuge and so much more god just thank you that you are mighty and magnificent and powerful God. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your word and according to your truths. God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. You are faithful. You are trustworthy. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, that you would open their hearts and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to return and to re repent and to be reconciled, God. We pray for all the disasters that are going on all over the world, God. We just pray that these people's needs will be met, that they would seek your presence during this time, God, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for Sean Foyt and his family as he's in Iraq right now, sharing God's love, sharing your love, and sharing the compassion of Jesus. And just reaching out to these people, these widows, these children, God, that were left behind from the war, from the Iraqi war, God. We just pray for safety for him. And we pray for much success and for these people to come and know Jesus as their Savior. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. There's been so many. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God that you would give them healing, God, that you would help them to rejoice, to know that their family member is not in pain anymore, is not sick, God. 
is at total peace. God, we just pray for all the uh, people that are facing this vaccine mandate that is unconstitutional, God. We just pray, God, that you would help them to stand strong on their convictions, God. It should be our choice. It should be just like the flu vaccine. You can take it or you don't have to. This disease is survivable, God. And you know that. We just pray for more truth to be revealed about all the things that we have been told the past two years. God, we just pray for um, a mighty move of Jesus. We pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, it's time to read. Anything to say on Facebook? I will have to leave early this morning. I will have to leave early tomorrow too. Sometimes on Sundays, if I have time, I share a little short something. I just sing some praise and worship that I'm doing. Okay, well, Psalm 44 is a redemption remembered in present dishonor. To the chief musician, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, in the light of your countenance, because you favored them. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Okay. Through you, we will push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever, Selah. But you have cast us off and put us to shame, and you do not go out with our armies. You make us turn back from the enemy, and those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. You have given us up like sheep intended for food, and have scattered among us the scattered us among the nations. You sell your people for next to nothing, and are not enriched by selling them. You make us reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision for those all around us. You make us a byword among the nations, a shaking of the head among the people. My dishonor is continually before me, and the shame of my face has covered me, because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles, because of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. But you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of God or, or stretched out our hands to a foreign god, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. And yet for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, why do you sleep, O Lord? Arise, do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our body clings to the ground. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. That was kind of a long psalm, actually. Yeah, that was all of Psalm 44. Now, part of this, um, 
I believe that they are talking about like Old Testament um, patriarchs and how God drove out the nations and put them in their place. And, um, and because he favored them. And then he talks about that he trusts, you know, that God is the king. And that he will not trust his bow or his sword. But God has saved them from their enemies and have put shame to those who hated us. In God, we boast all day long and praise your name forever. And then it changes and he starts talking about the things that God has um, forgotten them. And he feels like the enemies are... Uh, being successful against them. And sometimes we do feel like God has forgotten us and we do feel like our enemy is being successful against us. But we need to remember that God, God never moves. It's usually us that moves. And I was thinking while I was reading this, well, I wonder what they were doing. Were they as close to God as the forefathers were, were they as close to God as they needed to be? You know, who knows? But I was thinking about that while I was reading, you know, about you scattered us among the nations, you sell your people for next to nothing and are not enriched by selling them, you know. And as I was reading that too, I was thinking about Israel now. And how other nations, many other nations, do not respect Israel and want to see their demise. But God says in his word that he will bless the people that bless Israel and curse the people that curse Israel. So I stand with Israel. I know that Israel is important to God. I know that they are his chosen people. And we are engrafted into that lineage through Jesus. And that is our only way that we are even linked to God's chosen people is through Jesus. I mean, God chose us to be saved through Jesus. So let's see what the study part has to say. Let's see if I'm even close to what the study part has to say. National... Wow, it just skips to 21 through 26. That's kind of weird. National calamity for Israel, probably a time of military defeat, may have prompted this psalm. The psalmist reflected on the military victories God had accomplished for his people in the past, calling to mind God's acts on behalf of his people when they entered the promised land under Joshua's leadership. The psalmist expected military victory for his people in the present just as he had in the past. Instead, God's people experienced calamity despite their faithfulness to the Lord. The Apostle Paul stressed that God is always with his children, even in the midst of suffering, in making them more than conquerors. The poet concluded by calling on the Lord to arise and deliver his people. So, maybe God was um, showing them that even in their suffering, that he will be with them. And even in our suffering, he will be with us. Just like we talked about last night, he, he knows and sees everything that you're going through. He knows it all. All you need to do is reach out to him. And um, pray. Just pray about what you're going through. And don't forget that God has a plan and a purpose. And sometimes his plan and his purpose includes us going through things just like these people because it gives us strength on the other side. And also it helps us encourage others. It helps us show people and we can share with them. We can give our testimony for what we did when we were in that situation. Well, this is what I felt like God was leading me to do in this situation. So this is what I did. 
So sometimes we do go through suffering because God never told us that things were going to be perfect here in this world all through the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there is suffering clear through now. There is suffering. Um, the horrific thing that happened in Houston last last weekend was suffering for many families. I can't imagine my child going to a concert and not coming back. Can't imagine that. Or even to be in the hospital for days and days and days and not be able to survive. I can't imagine that. That would be horrible suffering. But our prayer for these people as they go through this is that God will meet them where they are and that he, they will feel peace, comfort, and strength and healing. Healing so that they can move forward, not forgetting their loved one at all just so they can move forward in life and know that um, hopefully their loved one is in heaven. I don't know. I don't know the hearts and minds, but God does. God knows all hearts and minds. Some of these young people might have cried out to God at the last minute. And just like the story that Jesus told, the reward is the same. And be saved for years and years and years. And go to heaven. You can get saved at the last seconds of your life. And go to heaven. It's the reward's the same. All right. Well, I feel like that is all that I want to say to you guys for this week. I feel like something that I didn't see. In the comments, if there are some uh, verses that you would like to read or like for me to read sometime, then put that in the comments also. If you have any prayer requests, please put that in the comments. I love to pray for people. Next week, one of my goals is to make me a new prayer list. I'm using an old one, I want to update it. A lot of the things that are on my prayer list have already happened really need to be praises instead of prayers so that is on my list on my to-do list next week let's see let's see how we want to do this message Steps to peace. And this is a good news tract. This is not mine. I have this in my possession, but I did not write this. Steps to peace with God. Steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God. But the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, John three sixteen. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life? God intended for us to have. So step two.
admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey. Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and go their own willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14.12 your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. Step three, discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, he became a human took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin. Bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 5. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3 18. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift. God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8, Romans 6, 23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life, but each person must make a choice. So it's up to us. It's up to us whether we want to make that choice or not. We must trust Jesus Christ. No, step four, embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me, Revelation 3.20. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14.6. The Bible says, To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1.12. Sorry, I just thought of something. See what Sunday we were on tomorrow. Where was I? John 1 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 3 36. So, what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in Him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So I'm going to do this prayer and I'm going to leave some space. So if you would like to pray, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior, then please repeat these words after me. Or, or do your own prayer. You can do your own prayer. It is not the prayer that saves you. It is the belief in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done. 
Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, if you said this prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you would like to have a closer relationship with God, then read God's word every day and pray and find you some praise music and praise God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit every day. Draw closer and closer all the time with him. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. So it is time for me to get off of here. <clears throat> and it is time for me to give you a blessing from God. And in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'm going to pray one more time. And I'm going to get off of here. I'm, I need to go. That doesn't feel real well today. I think he has some allergy issues like me. And uh, I need to go fix him some dinner. God, we just come to you and we thank you. We thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word. We thank you for the reminders, God, that you are never far from us, that sometimes we step away. And whenever we do go through things, whenever we do suffer, God, that you are always there. You send us the Holy Spirit and you send us Jesus that will guide us through. God, I just pray that uh, you would bless us and protect us and provide for us. And that you would guide and direct us, God. That you would order our steps every day for your glory and your honor and to fulfill your plans and purposes for our lives. That you would give us boldness, God, to go out and share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. That we would invite more and more people into your kingdom, God, into your heaven. And that we would find more and more ways to give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. It is time for me to get off. You have an awesome, awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. I hope that you have a church family that you can go and you can learn with and you can praise with um if not we go to the walnut springs baptist church in the big city of walnut springs texas so just come come and join us our sunday school is at 9 30 and our sermon our worship service is at 11 so much love and cyber hugs. Well, I'll see you again. Good night.